Doug Bremer is a doctor. He's also an academic doctor. Uh, and he studied psychiatry. Right. And what was your other specialty? Nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine. Yeah. You're a man who took on a major pharmaceutical company because you did research that demonstrated that there was strong data suggesting that a drug used for acne could be causing kids in particular to commit suicide. And that drug was making a lot of money, uh, potentially a billion dollar drug for a pharmaceutical company. So obviously, you know, you were potentially digging into their pot of money because they might not sell as much of the drug and there are a lot of jobs at stake. So they came after you? That's right, Neil. They, they were not happy with the fact that we'd done these studies that showed that this drug was, was supposed to be for the treatment of acne, actually could be causing some kids to kill yourself. Now, none of us would like it if, if one of our children were to die at a young age, especially when it was for taking a medication that was for the treatment of pimples. And, but this drug was making over a billion dollars a year for the, the company that manufactured it. It was a drug called Accutane. It's called Roaccutane in Europe. And they were not going to admit the fact that their drug could be having such a serious consequence as making kids depressed and in some cases suicidal and killing themselves. So your study sort of demonstrated that uh, there were certain changes taking place in the brain, in certain areas of the brain that could very well be responsible for depression in the people who were taking Accutane versus those who were not taking. About 20% of them had these changes, is that right? That's right, Neil. What we found is that a part of the brain called the frontal cortex, which plays an important role in emotion, had a decrease in function in the kids who were uh, taking, taking the drug. And many of those kids that were taking the drug and had changes in brain function also had headaches, which means that there's something going on inside the brain. But that's not the only part of the story. It's, our study is just one part of the overall picture. In addition to that, there's hundreds of reports of, of suicide that have been in the literature. There's cases where kids get depressed when they go on the drug, and then they get better when they go off, and then they get depressed again when you try and take the drug again. And that's something called challenge, de-challenge, re-challenge. And that in and of itself is enough to come to the conclusion that this is a dangerous drug that can cause that potential side effect. There's also a large study done with thousands of patients showing that the risk of depression is about twofold increase in people taking Accutane. And in fact, the company took the drug off the market June of last year. But they still to this day refuse to admit that the drug can make some people depressed. And that's the issue that I have is that, yes, pharmaceutical companies bring life-saving drugs to the market. And yes, what they're doing is important, but there do, are times when drugs can cause side effects and they have to be uh, quicker and more uh, ready to admit that there's potential problems and not put making money or getting profits over the health of people. But is it, I mean, if it was me or I'm sure any caring person in the world, uh, who was compassionate and concerned about human life and so forth, I would expect that the company said thank you very much for letting us know this. Uh, we might have to take our business in a little different direction because we don't want to hurt people. That's not what we're in business for. Isn't that how they responded? Actually, Neil, they didn't respond that way. They responded by suing my university, accusing me of fraud, I had to go through inquiry related to that. 
uh, they got subpoenaed to get all the data from all of our research and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to hire doctors to debunk what we'd said and, and what we'd published. Still in the end, our paper is still in the published literature. They weren't able to get rid of it, but they sure as heck tried. And um, you think that, that a company, when a side effect like that is pointed out, that they would be interested in trying to understand what's at the bottom of this, but instead they, they typically use tactics of stalling and, and of denial. And you have to remember that these are corporations, that they're not compassionate individuals. They're, their goal is to make money for stockholders. And they're the same as an oil company or a company that makes light bulbs or toothpicks. Their goal is to try and make money. And if they can make money selling a drug that promotes health, that's great. But they also will often make money at on drugs that are not working that great, or they'll try and push drugs into markets where they really shouldn't belong. I wrote a book called Before You Take That Pill, Why the Drug Industry May Be Bad for Your Health. And this is just, I went to the literature, I read things in a, in a uh, fair and honest way. I wrote about the relative risks and benefits, the way that I viewed them as a doctor reading the literature. I am not against taking prescription medications. I just think that people have the right to know what the true risks and benefits are. I mean, if you're getting all of your information from a pharmaceutical marketer, of course they're gonna try and make the drug look better than it, than it is. And they pay for the education of doctors. All the continuing education is paid for by drug companies and accompanied by a nice dinner. And they are paying the speakers or the academics. And, and it's really a corruption of the system that's been going on for 20 years now. And I have an alternative viewpoint, which is just another piece of information that people can consider. And you think that people might appreciate that, but it's actually been very hard to get that alternative viewpoint out there for people to learn more about it. And so I think that we have a situation where, the, you know, half of uh, Americans are on a prescription medication, 80% are taking some sort of pill or a supplement, and that's, twice as many as any other country, but our healthcare is second to last in the industrialized world. And I just think that this is a, a situation where the marketing machine has gone, gotten too extensive, it's corrupted and, and influenced and extended its reach into the medical um, educational system all the way down to the level of medical students. And it's time for more of a balance and people want to understand better what they're putting into their bodies and they want to take control of their health. They don't want to be told to do what, it, what to do anymore. And there are some doctors who are like, like Neil, who are trying to, um, to change things a little bit and, and empower the healthcare consumer.